in June 2019, as I stepped off the plane to Ottawa, I thought to myself, just what did I get myself into? The story goes all the way back to January 2019, when I was half a year from completing my grade 10 year. So at the time, I felt quite lost and exhausted and didn't know really what I want to do for the entire summer. I did not want to go to summer school again and I know that I did not want to do anything academic anymore. So I thought to myself, what better time to realize my dream of solo traveling? This has always been a dream in the back of my mind. I still remember when I was younger, as I lie in bed, I listened to the bedtime story. It's from a book called My Side of the Mountain. And in that book, the protagonist, a little boy, went on an adventure onto his nearby mountain and lived there for a couple of months all by himself, gathering all the natural resources that's available for him to survive. And that was quite an inspiration to me as I always wanted to do something alone uh, away from my family and my friends. I still remember in grade six, I thought to myself, and I told absolutely everybody that in that summer after I finished grade six, I'd pack up my things and go on to my nearby mountain called the Grouse Mountain and live there for the entire summer and hunt wild chicken and wild grouse to feed myself and live. But unfortunately, I chickened out. However, at the end of uh, grade 10, I found this opportunity wide open for me. And I had this thirsty ambition to realize this dream. I convinced my parents, although it took a while, and hopped on a plane to Ottawa, as you can see there. I packed up all my things and did the traveling transportation to Ottawa all by myself, including going on trains directly to the airport and taking the plane, staying at the layover in Toronto, and finally arriving at Ottawa. On the plane though, I was feeling really doubtful, but at the same time really excited. And I was thinking about all the ways I am going to solve any potential future problems that I encounter on this trip. And I hopped out off the plane and after getting lost for a while, finally arrived at the town center at this market that I was looking for. On that entire trip, I visited all the national museums, all seven of them, in a mere five days, plus a morning yoga session and a few parliamentary building visits. On that trip, I was constantly handing my cell phone to strangers to take photos for me. And to this day, I'm still surprised that none of them took off me with my phone. It also involved me renting out a bike without a credit card as a minor and getting into arguments with a few people. But those are all a part of the journey. At Ottawa, it was a beautiful day. And every single day, I cherished my time there, never looking back. And every single day, I lied in bed thinking how free I was. And sometimes people ask me, do you ever feel alone? Well, the truth is, yes. A lot of solitude and a lot of loneliness. As you can see here, at times I sit on 
an empty table and eat all by myself. But that also gave me a lot of time for reflections, thinking about what I really want out of the journey and what I want out of my entire adventure. It involves a lot of loneliness sometimes at night where I lie in bed thinking about the next day, what I was going to do, and thinking about how much I miss my family. And sometimes walking down the street, I felt that I was the only outsider in that huge city. And at last, I'd like to share a story with every single one of you. After my Ottawa trip, I took a train all the way to Quebec City. But unfortunately, the train experienced a two hour delay. And when I walked out of the train station in Quebec City, I found myself really lost. As everybody knew exactly where they were going after leaving the train station. And every single one seemingly had a family or a friend to pick them up. So I was stuck middle of the night on an empty street with my phone battery at only a mere 10%. And with my data just happened to run out. I didn't speak any French and I didn't know what I was going to do. That was when that I felt that I hit a rock bottom in my trip. As I lugged my multi-kilogram luggage up the hills of Quebec, I found myself wondering what was going to happen next. Am I going to get killed on the street? Am I going to get kidnapped now? I felt so vulnerable, and I felt like nobody was around me to help me. But as I walked up the hill, I found amazing people, amazing hospitality. People pointed the direction for me to my Airbnb. And even some people led the way for me. And at last, I survived the night and found my Airbnb. But this story and this experience really taught me that I can truly take care of myself on my own. And I did not need to heavily depend on someone to really lead the way. And I was capable of doing that, something that I never truly realized in the comfort of my home. So this led me to grow in ways that I never thought I could. Although the trip is not rainbows and unicorns like sometimes you see on television, it still involved a lot of joy at times. For instance, I get to meet people from my city or near me that I didn't even know of. This girl on the left is a tour guide for the parliamentary building tour. And she happened to be from the exact city that I am. And this other girl that I met on the Ottawa River cruise happened to be a Vancouver Islander who I never really knew. And to this day, I still have contact with them. And this shows you how much traveling can open the world for you and change your perspective. At the end of the day, I know that what I'm advocating for is something highly unconventional. Not everybody have parents that strongly support them from taking this risk. And not everybody can possibly find anyone or resources that lead them onto this adventure. However, I encourage you to consider this possibility. I know that you probably heard a lot of horror story of traveling. Maybe people being the victim of certain crimes in an unknown city Maybe people being kidnapped or abducted. However, I don't believe those are things to be afraid of. In fact, take precautions, but 
Don't let these horror stories stop you from exploring the world. As a youth, I know how at times we internalize school and how much school is to us. At the current stage, school might feel like the world to you as you are constantly involved in this system. But however, as I embarked on this trip, I got to explore people all around me that I never truly knew and went out of my way to see the world and see how many people there are that support you on this adventure. So I encourage you to think about this possibility and how much you can learn out of a journey away from your family and away from your friends. Who will you be?